I'd like to invite you to um, play along with me and tell me, what do you see? What do you see when you look at this? And what do you see when you look here? And what do you see here? <laughs> and how about here? <laughs> All right. And what do you see here? So I'd like to challenge you to look again. And tell me this time, what do you see? Tell me, do you see a big block of marble? Well, do you see this amazing statue of David made out of a block of marble? Do you see grains of sand? Or do you see the spectacular building made out of glass that was made out of those grains of sand? Do you see little tiny seeds? Or pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> or do you see this magnificent, spectacular redwood, giant redwood tree made that grew out of that seed? Do you see mushrooms? Or do you see this 100% biodegradable packing foam that's made from mushrooms? So what do you think about what you see? I'm a teacher. I teach teachers. Um, in less exciting terms, I'm a professor. <laughs> and I teach exciting courses, though, with names like critical pedagogy and practice and critical multicultural education and exploring the sociocultural and political context of teaching and learning. Um, and within those courses, we tackle difficult topics, complicated topics like race and racism and sex and sexism. And we talk about cisgender privilege and heteronormativity. And we do this in the hopes that with teachers, when they explore these topics and they understand this sociopolitical context of teaching, this larger context of teaching and learning, the context in which their students grow, that when teachers do this, then they'll do a better job with their kids. That they'll do a better job in their classrooms because they understand who their children are and what they're able to do and what they live in. So I want you to imagine again, once again, I want you to imagine with me that you're a teacher and it's the first day of the school year. And you're standing outside your classroom door and your classroom is all ready for your kids. You've got their morning work laid out on their tables. You've got their fully sharpened pencils sitting out for them to work with. You've got your crayons, you know, they're still whole, they've still got a little paper wrapped around them. And the crayons are laid out on their tables for them to use. And you're standing there and watching your kids and greeting them as they walk in the door. But you're not alone when you're standing by that door. There's another person standing next to you. And she's wearing a really nice suit. And she's holding a clipboard in her hand. And as she's holding her clipboard, she's looking up all the kids in the classroom. She's looking every single one of them up. And she's looking them up on a clipboard, and she's telling you things. She's saying things to you like, do you see that little girl over there that's standing in the corner? And she's got a little crowd around her. Her morning work is in the shape of a paper airplane right now. But she's got a little crowd around her. And they're listening to her words. They're listening very intently. Well, that little girl is one day going to say, change some laws about women, and it's going to make the world a better place for women. And you see that little boy over there with the sad eyes. He looks very serious, and he's sitting on the floor. He doesn't even know there's morning work for him. But he's sitting on the floor there by himself. You might have noticed the smell when he walked in the door, and you might have noticed that his shirt is very wrinkled. Well, that little boy over there, he's going to be a remarkable father of four little girls. And he's going to raise them to be pretty amazing young women. And he's going to do it by himself. And over here, right here in this little corner, this little girl has found your paints. This little girl has poured her paints out all onto her, your brand new carpet. And she's mixing them up. Well, this little girl right here is going to one day find the cure for cancer, the cure for cancer. And the woman goes on down the list, and she looks up every single child in that room, every single one of them. And she tells you, she tells you not about their potential, but she tells you about their reality. This is the reality of what they're going to do. This is what they're destined for. And when she finishes going down that list, 
you stand there. And you stand there in silence for a minute, and you take it all in, and there's this heaviness on you. Because you realize in, the, in that moment that not only is this your great honor to be with these people, but it's also your great responsibility to do the right thing with them, to help them on their path to getting there. And so you think to yourself, now that you know this, you know this about these children, that little girl over, standing in that corner over there that had the little crowd around her, would you then maybe that day go over to her and listen to her for a little while? Listen to her and tell her that her words are important, that what she say, she has to say to the world is important. And you tell her that because you know that she's gonna have to do this one day. And that serious little boy over there, would you maybe take a few minutes out of your day that day to help him think through his feelings because you know that one day he's going to have to do that with his four little girls. Oh, and this little girl that's over on your carpet with the paints, she's mixing them up. Would you then go over to her and watch for a while as she mixes those paints and tell her how beautiful those colors are that she just made and tell her to keep mixing because you don't know what she's going to mix one day and then lead her over to the sink to help her clean it up. <laughs> the thing is, unfortunately, teachers don't have that. When you're standing outside your classroom and you're teaching your kids and you're watching them every day, you don't know that. You don't know the reality of who they have to be. And so you have to use your imagination. You have to imagine their highest potential and you have to teach from there. You have to imagine that they have somewhere that they're going and that you are a part of that and it is your responsibility to see them that way. You have to teach from that perspective. I did have one more. Um, remember this? <laughs> what did you see here? Cute little boy with missing teeth? Divorced parents? <laughs> or did you see the 44th president of the United States? No offense, Michelle Obama, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to stand next to this president on a stage. <laughs> so before I finish, I want to challenge you out there. I want to challenge you to maybe go out into this world and in the interactions that you have with everybody and in the way that you see the world, could you imagine a reality of what this world could be like? Could you imagine and see the reality of the people that you're with and then to talk to them and interact with them from that place of seeing who they are? Thank you.